a rare invitation to Friday prayers. In Tehran's most conservative shrine. A high-ranking commander from Iran's Revolutionary Guard is addressing the faithful. A Western crew filming this here is almost unheard of. Commander Nasser Shabani is just back from Syria's civil war, where he says Iranians are fighting Daesh or Islamic State before it can attack them at home. Familiar chants against the West. Death to America, death to Britain, death to Israel and Saudi Arabia. Before a Kalashnikov clutching cleric leads prayers. In a week's filming, we were given unprecedented access to a country that remains deeply conservative, but is also undergoing profound change. After prayers, a rally, women protesting to support the Islamic headscarf. Young people chanting again against the West, but this time with impeccable politeness, apologising for it too. Do you shout, down with America, down with England? Yeah. Don't you like America? Don't you like England? No, not that much. We love Iran, of course. Uh, sorry, where are you from? We're from England. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, actually, people are here, you know, to show their mm, probably loath uh, against Israel and the US. And also England, they're shouting down with England, is that right? Uh, yeah, they are. But do you like America? Uh, yeah, why not? You know, just, uh, I like people, you know, it doesn't matter where they are from. Mixed feelings then about the outside world in a country that is beginning to open up. On the outskirts of Tehran, the tomb of Ayatollah Khomeini, who led Iran's Islamic revolution and began its isolation from the West. Almost four decades on, he remains revered by tens of millions. The revolutionary religious brand of government he began still holds sway. It's the Iran we've known for almost 40 years. This isn't. If you think Iran's all ayatollahs and headscarves, think again. In a brand new shopping mall, Iranians can indulge a love of consumer goods, with many of the brands we're familiar with available here. In an alternative 21st century reality. Here they're happy to talk about their love of the West. You like Britain and America. Yes. And Iranians used to say Britain was little Satan and America was big Satan. Has no. that changed now? <laughs> uh, it's a political uh, slogan, but uh, my people uh, love uh, uh, Western culture. Uh, my friends uh, love uh, America, love uh, Britain. Do sorry, the American English. So, me for a second. He loves London. <laughs> so he loves London. Yes. And, and you all like America. Uh, all of us. And is it is it safe in Iran to talk about politics yet? Yes. It's safe. You can't talk about politics because uh, she says uh, you are lying. But I say uh, it's safe to say uh, our favorite politics uh, conditions. But um, I'm not activist. Uh, if you be activist, uh, it's maybe a danger. If you're an activist, it's dangerous. Yes. And when I travel to Iran, I can see that everything has changed, especially young people and the situation. Yep. Yes. Is, is life getting better here, do you think? Yes, I think so. Yes. Absolutely. Think so. Yes. Absolutely. More freedom for young people. Up to a point. Human rights groups have serious concerns about civil liberties in Iran. But once strict rules about clothes and behaviour are being relaxed. In the park, another surprise. 
it's hard to imagine anything more Western than a skate park. Iran's government is building lots of them. Apart from the headscarves, you could be anywhere in America. We talked to Irfan Rastami, soldier turned skateboarder. He doesn't like everything he hears about the West. For me, if I was if I was leaving United States, I was kind of afraid more than Iran. Why? Because I think like nowadays, uh, police killing black people, you know, and I've heard from many friends, Iranian friends who lives in United States, that uh, you guys even live in more freedom than Americans. See, because for me, I'm not really looking freedom as like going club, drinking, you know. I think freedom is uh, when you see your life, you are okay with it, you know. You just smile. We left Tehran, past Salt Lakes, heading south for the city of Qom, the spiritual heart of Iran. Millions come here to worship from across the Muslim world at an important Shia tomb under minarets and a burning desert sun. Here, 100,000 religious students study Islamic doctrine. We met one of the city's most senior clerics. Ayatollah Hamid Maliki told me there were good things about the West, like its work ethic and technology, but that's not what it sends abroad. It seems like the US is doing this on purpose, not to pass on the good parts of the culture and technology, but just the decadent part of its culture, to keep the youth of the third world under control, to keep its superpower status. Iran is a country of bewildering contrast, where the old collides with the new, where a religion that goes back centuries is worshipped alongside modern material devotions. There's no doubt many Iranians want progress and their country to open up more. They voted for a government that's done a deal with the West. America, Europe and others said they would lift sanctions on Iran and Iran said it would scrap much of its nuclear program. But a year on and many Iranians say they are disappointed and feeling let down by the West. Hamad Banadinejad was one of the Iranian officials who negotiated the deal. A year later, he's now helping defend it as public disenchantment grows. Press conferences begin here with the national anthem, which is always followed by a prayer before questioning can begin. Mr. Banadinejad answered more than two hours of questions, many of them skeptical. Afterwards, admitting to us the agreement is facing serious problems. You've had a lot of questions today. Yes, Do you sure. think that there is uh, the deal is in some doubt now in Iran, one year on? No. Because you it's had a lot of questions. Sure. It was a two-hour sure. press conference. Sure, sure. Are there doubts in the Iranian government that this will work now? No, there is no doubt. It's working well, but there are problems, there are impediments, obstacles that we are, in fact, determined, and all of us with the the good cooperation from our colleagues to to overcome them and, and resolve them. How significant are those obstacles, do you think? <laughs> are they serious mm -hmm. obstacles? They are serious because uh, it's not only the question of the subject matters, but it's the question of the commitments of the other side to be complying with their obligations. Dive into the Grand Bazaar of Tehran and you'll be told the hopes of a year ago are melting away. Lifted sanctions aren't being felt much here, they say. Carpet seller Mehdi Gazvinian says the grand bargain Iran struck with the West is not being honoured by the other side. So the deal with America, yeah. has that helped your business? A little bit, not so much, but it was a... Uh, just a, a small hope, you know, for future, but until now, no happens. Not much difference? No, not much difference. Opinion polls say the nuclear deal is increasingly unpopular with Iranians. 
Analysts close to hardliners in government say Western leaders need to understand what's at stake. I think what they should realize uh, is that if, if this agreement fails, Iran will go back to its previous uh, nuclear policy of expanding the nuclear policy. Uh, and some people in Washington are not going to like that. The question of military confrontation will be on the table again. And that's not really good for anyone. That's not good for Iran. That's not good for this part of the world. We already have too many wars going on. And then this is not good for the other side either. Outside the bazaar, furious trading in gold futures on the black market, a kind of underground Iranian Wall Street, and a sense of the country's untapped economic potential. Okay, welcome. Now you're at Business country. delegations hoping to make the most of it are brought here, a tower soaring above Tehran. A steady stream are coming to enjoy the view and do business here, but not the number Iran had hoped. The US, Britain and Europe remain critical of Iran. Its support of groups they regard as terrorists, its ballistic missile tests and poor human rights record. But both sides had agreed to work towards ending years of animosity. Many here clearly still want closer ties. There's an obvious yearning for more contact with the outside world. But the window of opportunity may soon be closing. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News, Tehran.